this is a basic ECU setup for a Honda D-Series. Mine specifically is the D16ZC. It's not running boost. There's nothing crazy going on with the engine. It's not built. It's an original engine with exhaust and intake components, and that's about it. Uh, and this is a video trying to help to get people who want to go full standalone to a basic setup that will get you running and ready to make a base map. Now, the first things you should be configuring after wiring it all in is probably your ignition inputs or your triggers. So your primary trigger will be reading the Honda crank position signal from the distributor Unless, of course, you have the crank fluctuation sensor on your crank shaft, which will also work and would look the same. Now, in the distributor, it's a 24 tooth wheel, but because we're referencing crank position from it, you only put in 12 because it will read only 12 inputs from each rotation of the crank shaft. It'll take two rotations to read all 24, so we'll tell it to only read 12. And obviously set up with a four cylinder, you wanna be reading the falling edge. Your trigger type is a multi-tooth wheel because there's no missing teeth versus using any of these other ones, two missing, one missing, or any of the others programmed into here. This is on an ECU Master EMU Classic, which comes with all these others, but not for the Honda distributor. Using a VR sensor. Um, and your first trigger tooth, in my case, the minimum trigger angle I can put in is 30 degrees, which would bring me to tooth number three. At 30 degrees offset would be lining up with top dead center on cylinder one. So that's what you're going to be setting up for your primary trigger. For your secondary, it's the cylinder position wheel, which is a one tooth sensor that lines up the crank position with this for a cam sync, which will tell the ECU when cylinder one is at top dead center, you know, about to ignite on its compression stroke. So it's again a VR sensor, it's a one tooth wheel, falling edge. And for these, I use the pull up to help clean up the signal. And once you've done that, it knows this is how you're syncing the camshaft and crankshaft so we know where everything is. Do not enable sync without cam sync. You have a multi tooth wheel, so it will not know where any cylinder is without the cam sync. To enable without cam sync is to tell the ECU when cranking, we can start injecting fuel, but it'll be batch firing and in wasted spark until it reaches cam sync, which only takes a second or two. So it's, it's something you cannot use when you're taking signal from the distributor. And then your coil dwell time is going to be over here. You can set up just like this. You can find these online and set it up. The important range is anywhere between 10 and 16 because you're considering everything's working properly. You're never going to reach 17 volts in a good day when everything's working fine. And you shouldn't be below 10 even when cranking with say all of your lights on and your coolant fan running you should never be below 10 volts or your battery is very undercharged um also all of your outputs for ignition will be off of the same coil output so every ignition event comes off of mine is wired to coil number one on the ecu because we only have one coil in the distributor to fire, so we have to tell it that every time you're going to fire the ignition coil, it's always off of coil output number one. You have to set that up yourself. That should be over here on the side. If we go under 
ignition, ignition outputs, and it'll look something like this. So I can go up to 12 ignition events, but I only have four cylinders, so I'm only going to have four. You just say it's a distributor, no amplifier, output offset zero, um, which is to say if your outputs don't correlate with the same firing order, you would have to worry about that. If you need help looking into that, you can click the help button and it'll tell you all the information you need. And then we'll go to fuel, fuel tables. So your injector phases, these are important to realize what this means. Injector one phase correlates to ignition event one. 2 goes to 4, 3 goes to 2, and 4 goes to 3. The ignition events aren't cylinders. This is firing order. First fire, second fire, third fire, fourth fire. So it does not correlate to firing order 1, 3, 4, 2, other than listing 1, 3, 4, 2 as if it were A, B, C, D. I'll change those alphanumerically to numbers. 1, 4, 2, 3 what you end up with. Um, ignition angle control. I'm saying that when my f injectors fire, they all end at a certain point. Rather than starting at a certain position through the cycle, it's going to all end at a certain position. If you need help with that, click the key. And we can have right here. Come on, scroll down. Not that far. All of the different options here and what they mean I'm using the end of cycle because it's very easy to know when your injectors are going to finish firing rather than defining where they start to fire and this will this table here injection angle tells it when does the cylinder stop or I'm sorry when does the injector stop firing in terms of degrees before for top dead center on the compression stroke. So you want it to quit firing just as the intake valve opens. So there's fuel in the port ready to go. And then the vacuum sucks it all in and promotes a better air to fuel mixture in the cylinder when it's actually spraying before the intake stroke. And then here's a basic AFR table. This isn't tuned in at all, but you can say 14.7 around idle and move that up to mid 12s at the high end is fine for just a base map setup just to get you started. Granted, the ECU will not reference this if you're using a speed density strategy with no closed loop feedback. So if your wideband is not being used as a factor in the fuel dosing, it will not reference this. It'll just tell you this is your target and that's what you want to hit, but you would have to tune your VE and fueling tables to reach that. So the next thing to tune in would be, oh, sorry, that didn't actually go. A VE table, this is mine, partly tuned, driving around for a little bit. When you're very first starting out, you want this to be all set to maybe 60, 70%. 70 could be pretty rich. This is just what mine happens to look like. I started out at 60 and that got the engine started as soon as everything else was set up correctly. But 60%, go ahead and try to start. If it's not starting, try adding more fuel, more fuel, more fuel until you do get it to start. And then you can read from your Lambda or you have a narrow band sensor, um, not ideal when you're using a standalone, may as well just go ahead and wire in a wide band, and then you can tune this while looking at your wide band readings and your logs. And this is just your general setup for fuel. You can put in your displacement 1590 cc's, fueling type, this is your strategy, is going to be speed density and using AFR. Injector size, the stock injector is a 240cc, and that's just how you're going to set this up immediately just to get everything 
in the right place and have the ECU know how the hell you're going to get this tuned. Um, well, that's back to the first one. And the second one here, this is your sensors that the ECU needs. So you're going to need a throttle position. Maximum voltage will be four, minimum. My exact sensor, I've messed around with this to get it exactly at zero when it's at zero percent. Mine's 0.39 volts. You can throw it in there zero to four immediately and that will work. Um, your oxygen sensor, mine's a wide band, so you do not touch these values at all. You only change what type of fuel you're using. If you're using E85, E10, whatever, methanol injection, who cares? Select that in there, select your kind of wideband. Mine's a 4.2 since it's supported by this ECU. Um, enable when no RPM is good for tuning startup. So it's already heated and it's already able to read AFR and Lambda before you crank. It just turns on the heater in the O2 sensor before the engine's running. A Lambda filter helps clean out that uh, signal when you're looking at your logs. Makes it a little bit smoother, easier to look at and less erratic. Map sensor, you should use the built-in map. It's a lot easier. It's programmed right in there. It's built into the thing. And unless you're running crazy boost pressure, you're not going to have a problem with this. Uh, so just click that button. That's all set up. Your coolant calibration is going to look like this. You have voltage on the bottom, zero to five. And this second bar up here is going to be your temperature at that voltage. So five volts says negative 40 degrees. And then it's just a 2D graph explaining. Um, intake air temperature, very similar deal. Um, in fact, they do look about the same. Um, 260 at the low end, negative 40 at the high end. Uh, mine are set up off of the, from the left here, oops. Uh, when you go to sensor startup, there's wizards here. They have pre-programmed ones into there. You can find that, you know, in the drop-down menu, go through and find it there. Honda OBD1s should be fairly similar to OBD2s, depending on what you're using, but OBD1s right there, ready to go if you're using it. And uh, other than that, you, if you're using outputs from there, I'm using mine to control a coolant fan, fuel pump, tachometer, and what else do I have? Coolant pump, I have an electronic coolant pump. And you can just set these up. Hysteresis, it means Mine turns on at 194 degrees, and it can turn off once it's gone below that by three degrees. Otherwise, you'll get a lot of stop start very rapidly. Um, for a fuel pump, use whatever output you're using to control that relay. After start activity means when I turn my key up here, you'll hear it. One, two, that's two seconds for a prime, right? And then the tack output just tells the tack what to do. Adjust this number, you can adjust it by very, very small amounts to get it perfect. Two ends up right for me. So that's all you really need to do in order to get your conf ECU configured to start trying to turn on your engine and start tuning it in from there. Hope this is helpful as somebody else who's dumb enough to use a standalone uh, D series like I am, or just interested in doing it. So thanks for watching. Hope I helped at least two people in the world. Goodbye.